Grocery Market, located in Lycans, PA, offers both convenience and a wide selection of products. At Boyer's Food Markets, you will always find quality items and quality customer service. There are over 6,000 items on sale every day. Boyer's Food Markets, where the shopping is fast and saving money is easy. Dairy Queen is located on Main Street in Lycans. Come here to please your sweet tooth with any one of the many blizzards, sundaes, milkshakes, or royal treats like a banana split or a peanut buster. And don't forget about the five buck lunch served every day from 11 to 4. Always be checking in because hours are due to change depending on the season. See you there! Daibo Straub and Troutman Incorporated is a local insurance company that was founded in 1986 when three separate local insurance companies decided to join forces and become what is now known as Daibler, Straub and Troutman. Being a partner in the Keystone Insurers Group aids them in their goal to provide its clients with a large array of quality choices within the insurance market. Still have questions? You can ask any of the local companies that are insured by Diablo Straub and Troutman, such as Cuppies Propane, Dairy Queen, or Halifax Area School District. Head over to their main office, which is located right across the street from Cuppies on the Square in Elizabethville, or go online to www.dstinsurance.com. Kerwin and Kerwin, attorneys at law, have been serving people in Dauphin County for over 70 years now. They are committed to providing quality, affordable legal services to businesses and individuals. Their areas of practice vary, including banking and finance law, administrative law, real estate, adoptions, personal injury, social security disability, health insurance, and taxation law. Stop in the Elizabethville office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., located on 4245 State Route 209 for legal assistance in any field. Klinger Lumber has all the materials you need for your home improvement projects. From countertop tiles to floor tiles and stone, you can find everything you need at Klinger Lumber. Don't forget to check out all the cabinetry that they have in their showrooms. Klinger Lumber is always there when you need them. Klinger Lumber is a family owned and operated business in Elizabethville, PA. They have been providing lumber, paint, and equipment for Dawson County for over 40 years. Their friendly staff can help you make your next home project easy as one, two, three. Make sure to come out to Clinger Lumber along PA Route 225 in Elizabethville when it's time for your next do-it-yourself project. For your convenience, they are open from 7 to 7 Monday through Friday and 8 to 5 on Saturdays. Check out Clinger Lumber if you want quick, easy, and affordable service. Klinger Lumber Company is a family-owned and operated business serving the Northern Dauphin County, PA for over 40 years. Klinger Lumber offers numerous services to all customers, including kitchen design, paint matching, estimating for building projects such as homes and decks, storm window and screen repair, and boom truck delivery. For all of your home improvement needs, visit Klinger Lumber Company at 3903 Route 225 in Elizabethville. Cuppies on the Square is a well-known local convenience store in Dauphin County. Whether you are stopping for a snack or there to pump gas, Cuppies has a lot to offer. Cuppies has various beverage and food choices to pick from. Even the local favorites, Gears Tea and Middle's Roast Chips. Cuppies makes their donuts fresh every morning to satisfy customers like you. 
Cuppies offers their own hot food menu, as well as the famous Cuppies Creation ice cream dishes. For all of your daily needs, visit Cuppies on the Square convenience store located in Elizabethville. Phyllis Chiano, a delectable taste of Italy right here in our own valley. Located in Elizabethville, PA, Phyllis Chiano is an upscale, home-cooked Italian restaurant, serving a variety of dishes ranging from pasta, seafood, steaks, wings, burgers, and more. Phyllis Chiano also serves a variety of fine wines and alcoholic beverages, as well as a vast selection of gourmet desserts. Stop in at Phyllis Chiano today. The YMCA, which is located at 500 North Church Street in Elizabethville, is a local organization that offers the community a place to come together and be active. Members of the YMCA are given full access to the pool, basketball court, and full fitness center, which includes treadmills, ellipticals, and a full weight room. Members can also sign up for fitness classes and other activities offered by the YMCA. Get involved and join the YMCA today. The Trojan Sports Network is on the air. Live for tonight's league contest featuring the Upper Dolphin Area Trojans and the Tri-Valley Bulldogs. My name is Connor Dietrich, and tonight I will be joined with Blake Messner. We are very excited to bring you our second broadcast of the year on TSN for week three of the 2016 football season. Earlier in the broadcast, you saw the uh, Upper Dolphin Marching Band. We'd like to congratulate them on a good performance. And really quick, I will give you a recap of last year's games. The Bulldogs nom dominated the Trojans last year. The game ended up 41-13. to Running back Danny Scheib rushed for 87 yards and a touchdown, while Ashton Buchanan caught three balls for 36 yards and a touchdown. For Upper Dolphin, it was wide receiver Donnie Gelnett, who had a great game with 82 receiving yards and a touchdown. Also, some quick information on the teams. Line Mountain or Tri-Valley, excuse me, has a great defense led by Danny Scheib, who is by far leading the team in tackles so far this season. Their offense actually has a trio of juniors who are all playing very well so far. Quarterback Logan Yoder, running back Scheib, and wide receiver Ashton Buchanan. Tonight you can expect the dogs to pound the, pound the ball on the ground up the middle with Scheib because he is their workhorse and he's having a great year so far on the ground. For the Trojans, it's hard to say what we're going to see tonight because they actually put in the new formation this week as the offense was struggling, only averaging 20 yards a game so far this year. So we're going to get a good look at that and see how things change. And we're going to step away for a minute here to watch the uh, Likens Little Tigers run out onto the field. And now welcome to the Likens Tigers Pee Wee football team. And now the Lakers Tigers Pony Football Team. And finally, the Lakers Tigers Midget Football Team. Welcome to all the Lakers Tigers players, cheerleaders, coaches, and parents to Tiger Night here at Georgia Stadium. And that is the future of the Upper Dolphin football program you just saw there running out into the field. Tonight we have a quick update. There have been some injuries to the Trojans so far this week. We know that Hayden McAllister will not be playing. He suffered a hand injury in school. And Tanner Bechtel is injured, but we are not sure about his playing status at the time. And we will update you on that as soon as we know. But now we're going to head to a few commercial breaks, and we'll be right back on the Trojan Sports Network. Grocery Market, located in Lycans, PA, offers both convenience and a wide selection of products. 
At Boyer's Food Markets, you will always find quality items and quality customer service. There are over 6,000 items on sale every day. Boyer's Food Markets, where the shopping is fast and saving money is easy. Dairy Queen is located on Main Street in Lycans. Come here to please your sweet tooth with any one of the many blizzards, sundaes, milkshakes, or royal treats like a banana split or a peanut buster. And don't forget about the five buck lunch served every day from 11 to 4. Always be checking in because hours are due to change depending on the season. See you there! Welcome to Upper Dolphin Area High School's Trojan Stadium and Petra Memorial Field. It's a nice contest between the Bulldogs and Tri Valley and your Upper Dolphin Trojans. As a reminder to all spectators, this facility and all district property is a non smoking, non tobacco use, and non alcohol environment. The Upper Dolphin Area School District has also implemented a spectator conduct policy. Failure to abide by these policies may lead to your dismissal from this event and suspension from future events. In an effort to keep our facilities clean, please place your trash in the containers that are provided throughout this facility. We thank you for your cooperation and please enjoy tonight's conference. And the captains are now going out onto the field. For the Trojans, it is quarterback Zach Rupp, running back Donnie Gilnett, and lineman Mason Bellis and Tanner Bechtel. So it does look like Bechtel will be playing through his injured ankle. For the dogs, it looks like number 32, Jake Crow as a captain. Number 36, I believe. I have to get a closer look here once the uh, coin flip is done. So 55, Brian Ruzinko is one of the captains also. Tyler Dalton, number 36, is also one of the captains. And it looks like number 35, 60, excuse me, Nick Rice is the fourth captain. And the uh, dogs have won the toss and elected to defer, so the Trojans are going to decide to take the ball to start the game. We're going to step away now for the national anthem and the Trojan alma mater. At this time, we have to rise and remove your hats for playing this nice national anthem song by the Upper Dolphin Alma Mater.
All right, and we are back on the Trojan Sports Network. Just taking a quick look at some league stats here. It looks like Logan Yoder, Tri-Valley's quarterback, is fourth in the league in passing yards, and their running back, Danny Scheib, is fifth in the league in rushing yards. And for the Trojans' defense, ranked last in the league in rushing yards allowed per game, but they are fifth in the league in throwing yards per game allowed, so maybe if Tri-Valley should throw the ball a little more, that could play into the favor of the Trojans. And like I said, there's a new offense for the Trojans, so all the bad stats from the first two weeks of the season does not really matter because it's going to be completely changed this time around. Looks like number three is back to return for the Trojans, Dalton Boyer. And I believe number eight, Colby Harner, will be kicking off here for the Bulldogs to start this game. It's going to be a short kick, fielded on the left side of the field by number 24 for the Trojans. He's still running, and he's tackled out of bounds. That is Jake Ramberger out across the 50 on their return. Good return by Jake. Going to start them with good field position. And now the Trojan, the I should say the newly designed Trojans offense is making their way out into the field for the first time. Get a look, see what it looks like. The first two weeks of the season, they were Trojans tried to run the ball a lot without much success. So we'll see if they look to throw the ball more, or just the new formation will give them more space to run the ball. And the ball has been moved back to the 40. It's going to be a hold on the Trojans on the return. Still a good field position to start the game. Looks like two receivers wide. Yeah, we're going to go a full house backfield, but a little different. Looks like sort of two slots in the pistol formation. High snap, Rupp's going to ha hand it off to Galnet up the middle, and he's going to push forward for a short gain of maybe two yards on the play. Two receivers set there from the Trojans. Did not see that much week one against Williams Valley. Same look here for the Trojans. I guess technically they're running two slots, but it is more of a full house backfield. That's going to send a man in motion. That's Mason. We see another high snap. It's going to be handed off to Galnet again up the middle. Looks like a and fumble. Nope. Nope. The running back was down before the fumble. Decent run there by Galnet. Setting up third and six now for the Trojans. So far, two, be two uh, high snaps there from the Trojan center. I'll try to get a look on a number to see who that is. I think it might be Keegan Kerstetter. Same formation again for the Trojans. Two split out wide. Rupp's going to send him in a motion deep this time. He's going to take the snap. Another high snap. Rolling to his right. He's pressured. He finds some time. Oh, when he's going to be brought down in the backfield by number 32 for Tri-Valley, Jake Crow, senior. Looked like that was number 55, Mason Bellis, on the snap on that one. Whoever is doing the snapping, they might have to try their best to keep it down there. Rupp had to wait on that snap to just come back down within his reach. By then, there was already pressure on him. Going to bring up fourth and about 14, so it's going to be a punt for Galnet. Number 44, Dawson, Sw Dawson Schwalm, and number 5, Ashton Buchanan, back to receive for the Dogs. Nice punt by Galnet. That's going to bounce around the 30-yard line and take a good Trojans bounce. Schwalm has the ball, and he has some running room. Still on his feet. He's going to be brought down from behind by number 2, Ben Cope there. Good job by Ben to make the tackle there in the open field now we will get the first look at the uh, Tri-Valley offense that has been having great success so far this year looks like in team offense this year they are ranked well they're ranked 6th in first downs fourth in passing yards and fifth in total offense rushing yards per game they are actually third so it's a good all around offense passing and rushing for the Bulldogs Yoder's going to take the snap and hand it off around the right side to number 44 Dawson Schwalm and he's going to be forced out of bounds at about the 39 yard line of the Trojans, good start there for the Bulldogs offense
Looks like the Bulldogs have trips left. Yep, trips left. Yoder in the shotgun here sends a man in motion. That's Crow. He's going to take the snap and he's going to look to his left and he's going to find Shy and a flare out of the backfield. Going to be brought down by Big Donna Gellinet there. Good play by Donnie. Good Actually defense. Force a about a five yard loss there. Good job by Gellinet to read that screen pass and get there before Shy had room to run. At least three receivers every uh, every play so far for the Bulldogs. That might be a sign that they like to do. They do like to pass the ball. This time it's going to be a fake sweep and a hand off the shy up the gut. He's going to drag a few Trojans vendors out for about a six-yard gain. Good job by Mason Bellis making the tackle. Bringing up third and long here for Tri Valley. 10, maybe 11. Could definitely expect to see a pass here. Trojan's defense looking pretty good here on the first drive. Going to be trips right again. And Yoder's going to look that way. He sees a man. Nope. That doesn't look like it'll go anywhere. Oh, and it will. Great catch, catch by Ashton Buchanan. Down at the, about the 10 yard line, maybe the 12 of the Trojans. Looked like that was well covered, but Buchanan made a great play on that ball. First down for the Bulldogs. It looks like he might have hurt himself on that one. That's a killer when it comes to momentum. Giving up third and longs like that, you think you're off, and then you're right back on playing for field position again. Tri Valley now well into the red zone. Excuse me, the ball's actually marked at the eight yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Shy, but he's looking to his right. He breaks one tackler, and he's going to march his way into the end zone, scoring the first touchdown of our contest tonight, making the score 6 to 0 in favor of the Bulldogs. 8.01 to go in the first quarter, and I believe John Steely will be on to attempt the extra point. Nope, that would be Colby Horner, same as the uh, person who kicked off. I want to kick the extra point. Yoder will be the, ho the holder. Good snap, good hold, and... Good point, making the score seven nothing now. Still eight oh one to go in the first quarter. Children's gonna get another look at their offense here. I mentioned earlier that I thought Tanner Brechtel was hurt. He's not, but another starting lineman, Blair Warner, is not able to play in this game. I know the Children's did have to move a few linemen around. One of them, I believe, actually was Bechtel, playing a new position on a bad ankle. See if the Trojans offense can bounce back, get something going here. Looking like a different kicker now for Tri-Valley. Number 80, Cameron Schatz on the kick. I believe he play, he's a soccer player for Tri-Valley. Going to be a high, nice kick. Field at the 15 by Boyer. He's looking for running room to his right, but he's going to be brought down at his own 25 by number 44, Dawson Schwalm. Good play there. Special teams. Good kick there by Schatz. Same formation again for the Trojans. Rupp in the pistol. Going to send Cope in motion. Another high snap. Rupp's going to hand it off to Cope. Excuse me, that's Ramberger on the carry. And he's going to be tackled after maybe a gain of one on the play. This looks like number 34, Brennan McAllister, is on the bench. Don't know if that's an injury or just talking with Coach Griff, but we will keep you updated on that if we find anything out.
Rupp's going to be looking for a man, and he will not find a man. Overthrows number two, Ben Cope, on the play. Bringing up third and ten now for the Trojans. And just remembered another lineman is actually out for the Trojans. Chucky Brown, number 64, I believe he missed last week. And now this week with a bad knee. Trojans line's really hurting now. McAllister, Warner, and Brown all out. I believe Carson Barge is also out. With a shoulder injury. I think you're right. See what the Trojans do here on third and ten. We'll likely see a pass here. Rupp sends Weist in motion. He's going to look to his left, but he's being pressured. Rolling to his right now. He just has to get rid of it. He looks for Ramberger, and he actually finds Ramberger. Good throw there by Rupp. Good catch by Ramberger, and that's going to be a first down for the Trojans. Their third of the season. Good job by Rupp to make something out of nothing. Yeah, great job there by Rupp. It looked like Trivala got a great push up front there, and Rupp managed to fend off the pressure and make a good pass downfield. See the Trojans can build some momentum here after that nice play. Rupp's going to send Weist in motion again, and he's going to hand it off to Weist up the gut, but he is going to go nowhere, stuffed in the backfield. Well, maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage there. Good pressure again by the Bulldogs' defensive line. Tri Valley's defense just isn't allowing them to rush the ball at all. Yeah, that's going to come down to that bruised up line for the Trojans. Just do what they can, try to hold off Tri Valley's defensive line for as long as possible. Second and ten now for the Trojans. Rupp's going to send Ramberger in motion, and he's going to take the snap. Rolling out to his right, he's being pressured from behind. Excuse me, rolling out to his left. And he had Weiss downfield, but a tough throw for Rupp to make there, rolling left when he was being pressured from behind. So that'll bring up third and ten now for the Trojans. Key here to this third down play is going to be a good snap. Make sure Rupp has time to survey his options downfield, not being worried. And it was a good snap. He's going to look to his right, and he's going to find number two, Ben Cope, for another first down for the Trojans. It's so two third down conversions in a row for the Trojans. Looks like it was the Trojans' second first down of the game. That matches their season total to this point. So a very good drive. So far for the Trojans, see if they can keep it going. Two third and ten conversions. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Kyle Glauner, watching from college. Kyle was our cameraman for all of last season. Did a great job for us. Thank you, Kyle. Rupp sends a man in motion here, and he's going to hand. He was going to hand it off to Weiss, but he brought it back. Looks to bounce it back to his left, but he's being pressured, and he's going to be brought down well into the backfield by number 44, Dawson Schwallow. Looks like a loss of about eight. Seven or eight yards. Looked like some miscommunication there. Looked like Rupp expected the ball carrier to take the ball, and the ball carrier thought Rupp was supposed to keep it. They ran into each other, and that resulted in a big loss for the Trojans. Rupp's going to look to shake that one off here now. Gain some yards in the positive direction for the Trojans. Another high snapper up handles it. He's going to look to his left. He finds a man. Good throw for about 9 or 10 yards there. Connor Reed with the catch. Going to bring up third and 10 now for the Trojans. Back to the original line of scrimmage. See if they can get another third down conversion here. Make it three in a row. Three for three. That'd be more than their season total through two games. Offense is looking a lot better with this new formation. Got to give Coach Bell props for seeing that what he had wasn't working. Switching it up. Finding some good success so far tonight. Yeah. 
Rupp's going to send a man in motion, and he's going to take the snap. He's going to roll to his right. He's being pressured. He has to get rid of it. And he's going to throw that wide of Ben Cope there. Good pressure by number 53 for the Bulldogs, Colt Schaefer. So after a good drive, it's going to be likely a punt for the Trojans. But good momentum to build on so far in this game. Schwallen and Buchanan again back to receive for the Bulldogs. Donnie Gelnett back to punt for the Trojans. The usual. Good good snap there, and that punt's going to be punt. blocked. Mason Bellis picks it up. Looking for some running room. Pushing for a few He's yards. Gain four or five, but he will finally be brought down. Did not see who blocked that punt there, but it was great pressure. Whoever it was fought through the Trojans' line. It's going to be good field position for Tri Valley as opposed to being pinned deep. Let's see what the Trojans' defense can do here. Try yeah. to stop them. Last series, the Trojan defense looked good, minus that one long pass, so they can limit the big plays from here on out. Trying they're to force like a punt. In good shape. Yoder's going to send a man in motion into the backfield. He's going to take the snap and hand it off up the middle to Scheib. He's going to hurl one man, and he's going to get about four or five yards in the play. Looking like the Bulldogs really a, f a uh, fan of that shotgun formation. They've used it every play so far this game, as have the Trojans. And a pistol now trips right. Another hand off the shy up the middle. He's going to bounce off a couple of tacklers. Gain about four again on the carry. Nice tough run by him. Steven Heck there with the tackle on that play. Had a great game week one against the Vikings of Williams Valley. Yoder's going to hand this one again up the middle, and he's going to be stuffed. Looked like he did not get that first down. Good push up there up front. By the Trojans. Good Looked job. Like number 58, Bechtel, I believe, made that tackle, making it fourth and inches now for the Bulldogs. I would assume they're going to go for it here, but we'll have to see. Yoder is off the field, so maybe they will punt. Looks like nope. they're going to go for they're it gonna here. They're going to go for it maybe with a wildcat formation. They have Schwalm in the backfield taking the snap. He's going to go up the middle. He's going to follow Scheib, his lead blocker, and he like will he gain the three or four. Good push by the Trojans up front, but not quite enough. Good play calling there by the Bulldogs getting Schwalm behind big Scheib. All needed a yard or two there, maybe not even a yard. Yoder's going to pump fake a bubble pass here, and he's going to look down the field to number five. It's like a pass interference on Ashton Connor Buchanan, Reed. but it looks like Connor Reed did grab the jersey there of Buchanan. Fans not happy with that call, but that was a good call by the ref. Reed did grab the jersey. That's going to cost the Trojans. I believe in high school that's a either 15 or 5-yard penalty, automatic first down. I think it's five. In the NFL, it's a spot foul. Yes, it is. Looks like it's going to be 15 yards against the Trojans there. First down automatically for the Bulldogs. Yoder back in the shotgun again. Twins to his left. He's going to send a man in motion, making that trips. He's going to look to his left, and he finds number two out there in the flat. Ike Lucas makes one man miss, 
but he will finally be brought down by number 24, Jake Ramberger. From the 12-yard line. Good catch and run there by Lucas. Good throw by Yoder. Bulldogs again find themselves into the Trojans' red zone. Made the most of their chance last time and punched it in with Scheib. Let's see what they look to do here. Twins out to the right this time. One man out to the left. Two in the backfield. It's going to be a run at the middle for Shy, but he's going to go nowhere. Good push up front by the Trojans' defensive line. Seems to me like they're keying on Shy and trying their best to shut him down, make someone else make a play for the Bulldogs. Looks like another tackle by Stephen Heck. Rollum in motion now is going to get a pitch here from Yoder, and he has plenty of room to run out to the right. He's going to be brought down by number 24, Jake Ramberger, at about the seven-yard line, making it third and five now, maybe third and four for the Bulldogs. And that's going to bring us to the end of the quarter here at Veterans Memorial Field. Quarter ends with a 7-0 score in favor of the Bulldogs. We're going to take a few, maybe just one quick commercial break, and we'll be back on the Trojan Sports Network. Grocery Market, located in Lycans, PA, offers both convenience and a wide selection of products. At Boyer's Food Markets, you will always find quality items and quality customer service. There are over 6,000 items on sale every day. Boyer's Food Markets, where the shopping is fast and saving money is easy. All right, and we are back now on the Trojan Sports Network. The team's just switching fields here to start the second quarter. Not a bad first quarter at all for the Trojans. Had one go very good offensive series, and the defense has played okay thus far. Minus one big penalty and one big play for the Tri-Valley offense. It's been pretty solid defense so far by Upper Dolphin. Well, let's see if they can keep up the defense and stop them here on third down. Third and five from about the six of Tri-Valley. Shibe is going to, he's pushing, he's pushing, and he is Looks brought like down he just has short. The first down. He does get the first down, but he is just short of the end zone. About the one-yard line. Would expect Tri-Valley here to try to punch this one in with Shy, but we'll have to see what they like to do. It's actually going to be a QB sneak instead by Yoder, and a good push there from behind by Scheib. Helps Yoder get into the end zone, making the score 13-0 with 11.32 to go in the first half in favor of the Bulldogs. Good push by the Tri-Valley's front line there. Give Yoder enough room to get in. Looks like number nine now, John Steele on for the extra point after Harner drilled his on the last attempt. Wonder what the idea is there. John Steely, great soccer player. Great guy also. Good snap, good hold, and good kick for Steely, making the score 14 nothing now in favor of the Bulldogs. The cheerleading booth from the selling cheer gear at the Trojan Spirit Stand. T shirts are only $1. They also have pom poms, beads, tattoos, and much more. So check out the Spirit Stand on the way to the protection stand. The usual return man back for the Trojans, number three, Dalton Boyer. Freshman, I believe. Shy 
Shad's on again for the kickoff. Shad's also a good soccer player for the Bulldogs. Going to be a short but high kick here, fielded by Gelman at about the 25-yard line. Looking to run straight at the middle, and he is out to about the 40. Good run, catch and run there by Gelnet. Going to start the Strojans with decent starting field position here. Rupp breaks the huddle and brings the Trojans offense up to the line of scrimmage. See if they can build on some of that momentum they got from the last drive. Whistle's going to be blown here to stop play so the T can be thrown off the field. Now we're back in action. Rupp's going to send Weist in motion and he's going to hand the ball off on a counter play to Gilnet. He's going to be met in the backfield and drove back by number 33 for the Bulldogs. That was Scheib. Scheib. Looks like a loss of one. I think Jake Crow was also running that tackle there for the Dogs. Him and Scheib both playing stout defense so far. Rupp's going to look to pass this time, looking to his left for Mason Weiss. That's going to be batted down. Great defense there by number 44, Dalton Schwalm. Didn't ever give Weiss the chance to catch that ball. Bit of a high throw by Rupp as well. Looks like Zach Rush might have rushed that one there with some pressure up front from the Bulldogs. Rupp's going to take this snap. He's going to be rolling out to his left. He's going to throw across his body, across the middle, and that's going to be almost intercepted by the Bulldogs, number 36. It was Tyler Dalton with the defense. Rupp just overthrew Reed on that one, almost cost the Trojans an interception. Rupp does not look very comfortable rolling out to his left to make that throw. Maybe they should consider rolling him out to his right if they want to want him to leave the pocket. Gillen on the punt. Schwalm and Buchanan back to receive. See if Gellin's able to get this one away. Yep. Last one was blocked by Tri Valley. It's going to be a bit of a high snap, but Gellin handles it. And it's almost, almost blocked. blocked. Looked like he ran into the punter there. Gellin was hit there, but no flag was thrown. If the defender gets a hand on the ball, they are allowed to hit the punter. Maybe that was tipped because it was not a very far punt. But it will go down to the 36 yard line, switch the field position a little bit. And the Bulldog is going to take back over. Look like Coach Griff was not happy with the no, no call on that one. Three wide receivers again. Yoder's going to send Schwalm in motion. He's going to hand it off, coming back to the right to Scheib. He's going to break a few tackles and then be brought down by the whole Trojans team, it looked like, out of the 42-yard line. Scheib showing his running strength there. Dodged one tackler and ran over another tackler. Big guy, hard to bring down. Scheib is listed at six foot two thirty five. Big running back. Quick as well. It's a good combination to have. Trips right now for Tri Valley. Yoder's gonna be forced out of the pocket. Good pressure there. I believe that was Gelnet. 
Good push up front by Gunnott there. Making Yoder force that throw. It's going to fall incomplete. Bringing up third and five now for the Bulldogs. Eric Schultz trying to get the student section going down there. Third and five now for the Dogs. Yoder brings the man up to the line of scrimmage. Going to be twins left with a slot it looks like this time. Yoder's going to hand that one off to Scheib and he is going to be brought down by number eight, Darian Wiest, I believe, with the tackle after a gain of two. It's like two or three yards short of the first. Good job by Weiss there. Met Scheib in the backfield. He did get carried for two yards, but he still managed to bring Scheib down before the first down marker, which is all that matters in that situation. Yoder came out, so it looks like they might punt here. So number two, Lucas is on the punt for the Dogs. Number 24, freshman Jake Ramberger back to receive for the Trojans. Going to be a nice punt Fielded by Ramberger at about the 25 And he's going to be brought down After a gain of maybe 10 on the, on the run Still going Finally brought down Good defense by the Trojans See if the offense can get something going here Get some points on the board Yep, they had that one good drive, and last drive they were stagnant. I think their total drive was negative one yards there. Let's see if they can bounce back. Rugs bringing the Trojans offense back on the field here. 8.41 to go in the first half. Still 14-0 in favor of the Bulldogs. Rupp's looking to pass here out to his left, but that ball's going to be batted down the line of scrimmage. I believe that was number 32, Crow. Good defense there by him, continuing his great defensive game. Rupp's going to send a man in motion. It's going to be a high snap, but he will field it. Looking for a man. Does not have a man. He's gonna, just going to throw it away. Again, Rupp rolling out to his left. Not looking comfortable. Not having anywhere to throw on that play. So that's going to bring up third and ten now for the Trojans. They've Two. been successful on third down so far. Two incomplete passes. I assume they're going to try to pass again here. Third and ten. Weist in motion. It's going to be another high snap. Rupp's going to field it and fire it to Jake Ramberger in the flats, but he will not be out for the first down. He's going to be brought down after a gain of five. Good throw there by Rupp, but just not going to be enough for the first down. Looks like it will bring up another punt for the Trojans. Yeah. 
the usual punters and ret punter and returners on this play. Swallow and Buchanan back to receive. Gelnat to punt. Nice snap there. Low punt by Gelnat. Going to take a nice bounce though for the Trojans. All the way down to the 12 yard line. Great punt there for Gelnat. Really switching the field position in favor of the Trojans. So we have about a 48 yard punt there after the roll by Gelnat. See if the Trojans defense can keep up the good work. Yeah, it is 14 0, but like I said earlier, other than a few big plays. Georgia's defense has been playing quite well so far. Yoder's going to hand this one off to number two, Luke. He's going to be around the end. It's going to be brought down by number 24, Ramberger. Good play by him. Keeping Lucas inside for only a gain of five. Could have been much longer there. Yoder takes the snap. It's going to be handed off to the left again to Lucas. Off tackle there for a gain of maybe two in the play. Another good defensive play by the Trojans, bringing up third and four now for the Bulldogs. Twins to the right now for Yoder. It's going to be a handoff, actually. To number 44, Swallow to the left side. He's going to be brought down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he gained a yard. Either way, we bring up about fourth and four, maybe fourth and three for the Bulldogs. Good job by the Trojans' defense, stopping on third down once again. Yep, good tackle there by Bechtel, the Trojans' leading tackler so far this year, to keep the runner behind the first down marker. Looks like Tri Valley a punt this one. Ramberger back to receive the punt again. Ramberger fields it at about the 45. Looking for room to his left, not finding any. Can be brought down after a gain of one or two in the play by number five, Buchanan. Five and a half minutes to go until halftime. Children's offense back onto the field. Rupp trying to lead them to uh, some points. Get the first points of the season for them. Rupp's going to hand this one off to Gelnet up the middle. And looks like the handoff is going to be muffed there. And it's going to be a recovered fumble by number 44, Dawson Schwalm. Miscue there by the Trojans. It's going to result in a good field position for the Bulldogs. Don't know what happened there on that handoff. off to Schwalm. Around the left end looking for room and he's still going to find more room. Out for about a gain of six. Good job by Schwalm there finding some extra room. Picking up some extra yardage.
Ewart are going to send Schwalm in motion into the backfield. And Ewart is going to look to his left to pass. You're looking back to his right now. Has Buchanan down the field. And he is going to catch that one and be brought down by Rainberger at the two-yard line. Good ball there by Yoder and good reception by Buchanan. Just a great play by Tri-Valley. Beautiful throw, throw by Yoder. Going to be a loaded full house in the backfield now for the Bulldogs. Likely to see a run here. Looks like Lucas is going to take the carry. He's going to punch that one in for the touchdown behind his big offensive line. Make it the score 20 to 0 now in favor of the Bulldogs. Let's see who kicks this extra point for the Bulldogs. Steely is still on the sidelines, as is Shat, so we'll have to see. Looks like Harner is back on for this one. Made a great kick on his first extra point of the game. It's like all sides. Yep, that's going to be all sides at number 13. We're up there. That's going to move the ball up about a yard and a half. It's like the kick was blocked, maybe. Bring the score to 20 to nothing. Tri Valley with 408 left in the second quarter. Shorten's offense is going to look to put some points on the board here before the half. Be a great time to get their first points of the season. Harner on for the kickoff here. Boyer back to receive again for the Trojans. Kick. kick. Going to be missed by Mason Bellis, and he's going to just fall on it at about the 12. Tough ball to handle there. That was bouncing in all different directions. Jordan's going to have a long way to go here, looking for their first score of the season. Rupp is going to send a man in motion and take the snap, hand it off to Gelnet up the middle. Good solid run by Donnie out for a gain of nine in the play. Close to the first down marker, but not quite there. One of the best runs the Trojans have had this season. Yeah, they came into the game with negative rushing yards in the season because of a few sacks, but good job there by Gelnet. Finding a good hole. Good job by the Trojans' offensive line to create that hole. Three and a half to go here in the first half. We're up, going to hand off to Gelnet again. Another good run. Another solid run by Donnie, gain of five there on that play. Gets him a first down. First down for the Trojans. Twins to the left now for up. 
He's going to roll out to his left, and he's going to be looking for a man downfield, but it's going to be overthrown through the hands of the defender there, number three, Yoder. Macklin Ayers was their intended receiver on the play, but Ruff was pressured and got rid of that one, but it's looking like roughing the passer. Trojans get bailed out there. That should be a 15-yard penalty. We'll see here. Give him another first down. Get to start over with better field position. Puts them out to the 42-yard line now. 2.55 to go. Rupp's going to take this snap, looking to his left again for a receiver. It's going to be another good play there on defense by Schwalm. Tips that pass out of the hands of Mason Weist. Going to bring up second and ten now for the Trojans. trips right now for the Jordans. Do not see this very often. Rupp's going to roll out that way. Getting pressured. Pressured. Good job to avoid the pressure there. He's going to throw it downfield looking for Weiss. It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be brought in with one hand by Mason Weiss. Beautiful catch. Great throw by Rupp. Great catch by Weiss. Yep. Rupp was under pressure there and just threw it up. Trusted his receiver to make the catch and Weiss did just that with a beautiful one-handed grab. Just 2.40 left. The Jordans are going to have a first down from about the 28-yard line. Did not see the game last week, but I think it's safe to say that was the Trojans' biggest offensive play of the year so far. Rupp's going to roll out to his left again this time. Looking for a man downfield. Being pressured from behind. He does get rid of it. And he finds number 20, Weist, again. He's going to be brought down after a first, another first down for the Trojans. Jordan's offense finally coming alive here, looking to get their first score of the season. Looking good right now. Still 2.19 to go in the half. Inside the red zone. Offense is looking really good right now. Good throw there by Rupp. Just lobbed the ball over a defender there. Found Weist. Good catch by Weist. Trips to the right again now. Rupp will likely roll that way. And he will. He's going to be looking for a man in the corner of the end zone. He underthrows Ben Cope, but great defensive play there by Cope to prevent the interception. 158 to go. Good job by Cope there, punching that ball out of the defender's hands because the ball was actually in the defender's hands. There could have easily been an interception. Like trips left. Interesting there. Not much room to work with over there to the left. Rupp's going to be rolling to his left. He's going to be looking for a man, but he's going to overthrow Cope in the end zone, bringing up third and ten. Interested that the Trojans didn't use the wide side of the field there. Did not have much room to work with. Maybe that's one of the schemes there. See if they can convert on third down here. 150 left. Trips to Rupp's right this time, and that's going to be a false start by number 24, Ramberg. They're going to bring up third and 15 now for the Trojans. Good drive falling apart, but they do have one more play here. See if they can make something happen on third and 15. Like a timeout by the Trojans. Coach Bell wants to talk it over with his offense. Going to regroup here, refocus, draw up a play, try to get the first down, or else good good uh, field goal position.
through the timeout now. We would like to thank Frontier Communication for providing the internet service at Children's Stadium, which enables us to bring you this broadcast live right now. Thanks again, Frontier Communications. Be sure to follow the Tri-Valley League on Twitter, at TVAA Sports, for all the updates from the league in all sports, football, soccer, volleyball, maybe golf. Low snap there, and Rupp's going to have to fall on that one. So the good, best drive of the year for the children is going to fall apart. It's going to bring up fourth and 20. It's going to be out of field goal range, so I guess the children are going to go for it here. Got to throw it up, see what can happen. Maybe a receiver can make another great play like Weiss made earlier. Great drive by the Trojans. It'd be a shame if they couldn't get any points out of it. Either way, still a good thing to build on, though. They see what's working now. We'll likely try more of that in the future. Trips to the right. Tri Valley's going to play some prevent defense here. Rupp's going to throw it up. And he's going to underthrow. Number two, Ben Cope's going to be knocked down, almost picked off by number one, Nick Ziegmont. And the Bulldogs are going to take over at the 23-yard line of the Trojans. Or, or their own 23-yard line, excuse me. Minute six here left in the first half. See if Tri Valley tries to score here or they just run the clock out. With only a three touchdown lead, I would expect them to go for the some points here, but we'll have to see. Nope, it's gonna be a handoff to Shy. Nope, excuse me, Schwalm on the handoff. He's still gonna be running. Looks like a rest missed a hold there on the sideline. But Schwalm's out across the 40. Gonna stop the clock by getting out of bounds there. Hayden Bell's with the tackle. Now with a good field position, I would expect to see Tri-Valley turn to the pass here. But the clock did restart. It's only 45 seconds to go, and it will be a pass by Yoder. He's going to overthrow his man, Ziegmont. Good pressure by the Trojans' defensive line. We'll stop the clock with 39 seconds to go in the first half. Yoder going to roll to his left here. Looking downfield for a man. Does not see anybody. And she's going to overthrow number 35 there. The intended receiver was Dawson Boltz. Going to bring up third and 10, 32 seconds to go. Really, qu really quickly, we would like to thank the uh, Agricultural, Science, and Technical Departments at Upper Dolphin High School for providing us with some equipment to help bring these broadcasts to you live every week. off to Schwalm, good for about five yards. See the children's call timeout here, just let this clock run out. And it looks like they are going to, nope, they will like to call timeout. 18 seconds to go in the first half. See if they can get a nice return here to set up good field position for one or two more plays. TSM would like to thank one of our sponsors, Klinger Lumber, for helping us make these broadcasts possible. If you need any help with your home projects, be sure to visit Klinger Lumber.
Ramberger back to receive the punt now for the Trojans. Lucas on the punt for the Bulldogs. Be a high but short punt. Not a bad idea there. Gives Ramberger no chance to return, and it's going to be out of bounds at around the 30 yard line. Just 11 seconds here left in the first half. Would expect the Trojans to take a knee here, but we'll have to see what they decide to do. Rupp's going to take the snap and roll out to his left. Good block by Gelnat in the backfield. Rupp looking downfield. He's going to underthrow Ben Cope. Tough throw there by Rupp. It's going to stop the clock with three seconds to go in the first half. One more play now in this first half. Rupp's going to have trips to his right. Got to throw this ball a long way. He's just going to throw it up, see what happens, and it's going to go. It's going to be incomplete, no interception there in the play. So that's going to send us to halftime with a score of 20 to 0 in favor of the Tri Valley Bulldogs. We're going to take a few quick commercials, and then we will be back in time to watch the Tri Valley Marching Band. Thank you for watching the Trojan Sports Network. Did you know, if all passenger occupants age 5 and older had worn seatbelts, an additional 3,031 lives could have been saved in 2012. That's nearly twice the lives lost on the Titanic. Just buckle up, a click could save your life. Did you know, if all passenger occupants age 5 and older had worn seatbelts, an additional 3,031 lives could have been saved in 2012. That's nearly twice the lives lost on the Titanic. Just buckle up, a click could save your life. Did you know? When the sun sets, unbelted deaths rise. 61% of passenger vehicle occupants killed at night were unbuckled. Just buckle up. A click can save your life. Did you know? The annual two-week Click It or Ticket crackdown has resulted in more than 3 million seatbelt citations over the last five years. That's a ticket every other second. Just buckle up. A click can save your life. and features music from artists of today and years gone by. Our opening number begins with Pat Benatar's Shadows of the Nights, quickly transitioning to Sun Nights, performed by Fun, featuring Keeper Quandell, Mikey Ulicki, Blake Olkin, Hannah Messner, and Sam Bess. Next, the band will pick it up a notch with the high-energy song Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, made famous by Sir Elton John. 
Selling more than 300 million records to date, he is one of the best selling music artists in the world. Finally, the band will close with the show One More Night by pop rock superstars Maroon 5 featuring Majorettes Bailey Rumber and Tara Burns. One More Night was nominated for Billboard Music's Top Hot 100 Song, Top Radio Song, and People's Choice Award for Favorite Song.
Music, music arranged by Mr. Drew Bonner. The guard instructor is Ms. Hannah Dodger. Officers are President Blake Wilkin, Vice President Devin Bixler, Secretary Alyssa Lightfoot, the Librarian Emily Bowman, Alexis Wachowski, and Michaela Wachowski. Thank you to the Travis School Board, Administration, Faculty, and Staff for supporting the music program. Thank you to the community for your continued support of music in our schools. Homecoming festivities here at Children's Stadium in two weeks. If anyone would like to donate the use of your promotion for homecoming, please see the cheerleading coach, Marshall Shell, down at the track tonight. The car is really out of place in class to all this homecoming music. Thank you very much. All right, the Trojan Sports Network is back with 120 to go until the half, second half begins. See if we can get a quick recap from the first half. There were three touchdowns scored by the Bulldogs. It was Danny Shy with a touchdown run, Logan Yoder with a QB sneak, and Isaac Lucas with a, another touchdown run, making the score 20-0. to zero. The turnover battle has been won by the Bulldogs. No turnovers for them and one turnover for the Trojans. Jordan's offense did look kind of sharp in the first half, though. I believe they gained four or five first downs, and they had gained two in the previous two games combined. So definitely a good start so far for this half and the rest of the season. Since you didn't hear me the first time, another shout-out to Kyle Glauner for watching at home. Kyle was our cameraman the previous a year, maybe two years for the Trojan Sports Network.
Trojans out in their stretching circle. Second half will soon be underway. See if I'll be able to find some score updates. I believe they're on the screen right now. We have Juniata up 24 to 0. I'm not sure who they are playing here. Oh, EJ, 24 nothing. I believe it's halftime there. We're looking for a score for the Williams Valley game. I'm not sure if we've found one yet. 12 to 6. Do we know who's winning the game? Williams Valley is winning the game against Minersville 12 to 6. Non league contest there for the Vikings. Millersburg's playing Newport. Let's see if we can find an update there. Struggling here to find the uh, um, Millersburg. Oh, here we go. I'll see if I can find one. Nope. No updates on their official football page. Maybe I'll be able to ask Mrs. Shelley Kasner if she has an update on that game. I've just received word she is not at the game, so it's looks like we're going to go update list for that one. going to be Bulldogs ball here to start the second half from Veterans Memorial Field. Looks like Buchanan is back to receive for the Bulldogs along with see if I can find who that is Dawson Bolts back to receive with Buchanan and it's going to be Eli Smith a soccer player on a kick for the Trojans. The second half is underway with a great kick by Smith. Going to be fielded at about the 12 by Buchanan running straight up the middle. He's going to be brought down by Smith on the play. Good kick, good tackle there by Eli. Buchanan took that one back to the 37-yard line. Going to sit up first and 10. See if Tri Valley looks to go with the run that they've been finding pretty good success with in the first half. Let's see if they decide to. Well, I should say they've been finding success both ways. Really, they've had some good pass plays, but the touchdowns have always come off runs. And they're going to go with a the run there in the first play for a short gain of three. I believe Ashton Buchanan has two long receptions that have set up rushing touchdowns for the Bulldogs. Looks like the Ligons Tigers cheerleaders are down there performing on the track. Yep, tonight we shouted out the uh, future of the Trojans football team, and that down there is now the future of the Trojans cheerleading squad. This one's going to be handed off to Lucas right at the middle. He's going to bounce it outside with that speed he has, see if he can get around Reed. Has a lot of room. Good job by Reed there, bringing the man down from behind at the 31-yard line. Still a good, solid run there by Lucas. Good play by Tri-Valley. Good blocking that they've had pretty much all game. Had a few lapses, but overall, good blocking performance so far.
Yoder's going to hand this one off to Scheiber on the left end. He's going to get around Macklin Ayers, it looks like. And he's going to run over one tackler, run over another, but he's finally going to be pushed out of bounds by, I believe, Reed. Down inside the 10 of the Trojans. It's like the 9-yard line. Looks like the clock is going to stop here. Not sure why. And it's going to be started back up again. I guess the ball needed to be set. Try to ready to go. Going to be a play action pass here for Yoder. Looking for Buchanan in the corner of the end zone. And he's going to not find him. Good defense there by number 24, Jake Ramberger. Buchanan almost had that one, but he did drop it. Looked like Buchanan might have pushed off a little on that one as well. Yoder's going to have twins to his left, to his right here, excuse me, in the pistol formation. Low snap, but he's going to hand it off to Schwalm around the right end. Good lead blocker there, and Scheid has one man to beat to the pylon. And he's going to be forced out of bounds at the one-yard line. Good play there by Jake Ramberger to save the touchdown. Good run by Schwalm. See if Tri-Valley can punch it in here on third down. Yeah, so far they've had three... Short touchdown runs, one by Yoder, one by Scheib, and one by Lucas, so it's hard to say who's going to get the ball here. Been spreading it out well so far. Yoder's going to take this one and hand it off to the right to Schwalm, and he's going to punch it in there for the touchdown. It's going to make that score 26 to ZR now in favor of the Bulldogs. John Steely comes on to take the extra point. Looks like Tri Valley's just rotating kickers on the extra points. Looks like they're rotating running backs for touchdowns as well. That's four rushing touchdowns, four different players with the touchdowns. Good snap, good hold, and Good kick. A great kick. kick. Kick was perfect. Great kick there by Steely. Going to make the score 27 to 0 in favor of the Bulldogs with 10.05 to go here in the third quarter. Looking like after Steely nailed the extra point, Schatz is going to be able to kick this one off. Boyer back deep to return for the Trojans. Behind Bellis and Gelnet, two big lead blockers there for Boyer. Good kick. Boyer's going to feel that one around the 15. Going to go up the middle with this one. Has some space to run. Good lead block in there by the Trojans. And Boyer's all the way out to the 38-yard line. Good return by Boyer. And a great kick by Schatz. Trojans offense back out into the field now looking to build on some of that momentum from the first half. Maybe punched in the end zone this time around. Trojans are going to stick with the pistol formation that they've been finding decent success with so far t this evening. Rupp's going to send Weiss in motion to the backfield. He's going to be a high snap. And it's going to be a, a number, another fumbled handoff there. 
Can't really blame Rupp for that one because of the high snap there. We the timing was just all messed up from the snap. The high snap meant Weiss was too far ahead of where he was supposed to be, which meant Rupp had no one to hand the ball off to. Fumble was recovered by Jake Crow. It's going to be the Trojans' second fumble tonight, both on handoffs. Tri Valley will take back over at the 35 yard line of the Trojans. Rough start for the Trojans here in the second half. Usually when that happens, you either point the finger at the quarterback or the running back, but there, like I said, it's the timing from the high snap that caused that mishap. Going to be a play-action pass now for Yoder rolling out to his right. He has a man wide open downfield. Beautiful throw by Yoder and a beautiful catch by Buchanan. He's going to be in for the touchdown. He's going to make that score 33-0 to zero now in favor of the Bulldogs. Another beautiful throw from Yoder to Buchanan. That connection has been on point tonight. That was a good fake on the run. Everybody went after Yeah, beautiful Shy play, action play there by Yoder. Sold the handoff well. Scores going to remain 33-0 now. 9.44 to go in the third quarter. Two very quick scores now for the Bulldogs. Two touchdowns in just over two minutes so far in the second half. Colby Harner was the one who made that extra point. Or missed. Not exactly sure what happened. Regardless of that here, it's going to be another Shats kickoff. It's going to be a low one this time. It's going to go out of bounds at the 30. I believe the Trojans will be able to elect to take that one at the 40. I think that's the rule. Don't see out of bounds kicks too often. They're going to start around the same spot they did last drive. See if they can put something together here on offense to get the first points of the year. So I was wrong. It goes to the 35, not the 40 there. The Trojans would have also had the option to take the ball where it went out of bounds if it would have went out of bounds deeper, or excuse me, Closer than the 35 yard line. Pist uh, nope, Zach's under center this time. Excuse me, he's going to send a man in motion. They hand it off to Weiss up the middle. He sees a nice landing cut back to. Good vision there by Weiss finding the hole for a nice gain of five. So, because of the uh, miscommunications and the bad snaps, Sturgeons like to go under center there. Excuse me, keeping the same formation. Just Reducing the chances of a bad snap. Good idea there by Coach Bell. It's going to be a timeout taken by the Trojans there. Did not see what the timeout was called for. There might not have been, I might have only been 10, 10 men on the men. field. Yeah. Boyer came out, nobody went back in. During the timeout, we would like to tell you that you can follow the Children's News Network on Twitter at UDATNN for the latest news and updated broadcast schedules. You can find our school's daily announcements there, run by students and Mr. Up and Mrs. Kasner, as well as these broadcasts of various football, soccer, and volleyball games. After the timeout now, Rupp's going to be back under center again. Uh, 
Rupp's going to send Weiss in motion again into the backfield. It's going to be another handoff. This time Weiss finds one or two there and another cutback. Trojan's going a lot with that motion where they send a man deep into the backfield and give him the ball. It's a good idea with Gelnet being the lead blocker. Gelnet's a former lineman. Brings up third and three for the Trojans. See if the Trojans go with the pass here. See if they can just go with the run, get enough for the first down, continue the drive. We're always back in the pistol formation. He's going to send Ramberger in motion. Another bad snap. Getting pressured. That's pressured a lot from behind. He's just going to have to get rid of it. And he's going to miss Mason Weiss along the sideline there. These snaps are really derailing any momentum the Trojans get going on offense. Very high, slow snaps. Might have to stick with that under center formation. Giving Rupp a lot less time to do what he needs to do. And giving the uh, Bulldogs defensive line more time to get into the backfield. It's like Gillnett out to punt. Buchanan and Schwalm back to receive like usual for the Dogs. Good snap there. Good punt. Nice punt by Gelnet. Going to be fielded at about the 30 by Buchanan. Layup. It's going to, whatever happens here is going to be brought back for a block in the back. Tackle made by Mason Weiss, but there was a flag on the play. Good call there by the ref. I believe it was number five, Connor Reed, the gunner there. Maybe it was Dalton Boyer. One of them got pushed there in the back. Looks like it was number 35, Dawson Bolts on the penalty. Trojans catch a break there after that nice return by Buchanan. So Yoder's going to take back over here with the offense from about their own 25-yard line. Yoder's going to hand this one up off the middle to Scheib, and he's going to be met by a whole host of Trojans there at the line of scrimmage. Brought down after a gain of one. Maybe two there in the play. So Scheib came into the game fifth in the league in rushing yards, and he hasn't broken off too many big runs against the Trojans. They've been doing a good job containing him for the most part. It's just Buchanan, they have to lock down out outside. Looks like number 16 for the Trojans out there. I believe that's Hunter Lentz. This time with defense on Buchanan. Yep, freshman Lentz. Give me another hand off the shot this time around the right end. It's going to... Nope, no flag on the play. I thought there was. And Shibe's still running. Still going. All the way down to the 40. Nope. Yep. May have set that out of bounds at the 43. Have to see what the refs decide here. They will mark it at the 41. And I was right. Originally there was a flag on the play. I believe it was a hold, but we'll have to see here. Yep, was a hold on the Bulldogs offense. Another big run brought back by penalties for the Bulldogs. Push that one back, make it second and 12, maybe second and 13 for the Bulldogs here. Twins to the right of Yoder. One man split out to his left. Usual pistol formation. He's going to hand this one off off the middle to Lucas, showing that quick speed. Good block there Good by run. Buchanan. Lucas is up the sideline. One man to beat, and Reed's not going to be able to bring him down. Last man to beat is Dalton Boyer, and Lucas will get into the end zone. Great play. Great run there by Lucas. That was a... Almost 80-yard run there, maybe even more than 80. Reed there was the last man to beat and didn't wrap his arms, tried to go for the big hit with the shoulder and could not bring the man down. Making the score 39-0 now in favor of the Bulldogs.
Colby Horner on now again for the extra point. Tri Valley sticking with that kicking rotation. Oh no, excuse me, that was Steely again. Steely but with another great kick. Showing off that good leg that he has. Looks like a Trojan's down in the play. It was Weiss, but he is up, jogging off the field. That's good to see. I'd like to thank Mr. Rupp for making it possible for us to do these broadcasts. Comes out here and sets this equipment up for us. Every time we have a broadcast going on, knows what he's doing with these computers. Big thanks to him. It looks like Harner is going to be on to kick this one off there, and Boyer's back again to return for the Trojans. They're getting a lot of work back there tonight as the kick returner. Going to be a low kick this time, fielded in the second line by the Trojans. I think that's Mason Wiest. Going to cut it outside twice. Mm -hmm. Good run there. Uh, excuse Good me, win. that was Jake Ramberger. Ramberger. Good job by him. A couple jukes, dodged a few tacklers, out to the 47-yard line. Good field position to start for the Trojans. Looks like there's going to be a timeout taken by the Bulldogs here. Maybe make some substitutions or just get the defense set up. So far the story of this half has been the running game for the Bulldogs along with the nice pass by Yoder to Buchanan. Sets up, I believe they set up three touchdowns together this game. Three passes that went inside the five that resulted in the touchdown the next play. And, of course, you had the big run by Lucas there, over 80 yards. Not sure how accurate this is, but I just got word that the that Newport is beating Millersburg 40 to nothing. Sounds accurate. Newport's having a very good year so far this year. Millersburg has been struggling the first two weeks. They don't have Bird, so that's a big loss for them. Was the best player on the team. Yeah, Christian Winger elected not to play football this year. Was a star quarterback for the Indians last year. Going to focus on baseball. Rupp's back under center now for the Trojans. Going to hand this one up, up the gut to Gelnet. Fighting for yards. See here who wins the push between the two lines. It's kind of like the Bulldogs going to win that one. Like a gain of about three. Still a nice gain of three or four in the play there by Gelnet. Looking like... All right, everyone's healthy. That's good to see. Trojans rushing looking a little better than it has previously. Still can make improvements. Yeah, I think the, the story of the Trojans' offense has just been failure to execute, I guess you could say. Failure to take advantage of their good plays. Had a very good drive down the first half that ended up not scoring any points. Had another good drive in the first half. Gained two first downs. Couldn't go anywhere with that one. Still nice to see him gain some yards, though, so far. Rupp's going to send Weast in motion. He's going to drop back to pass. Looking to his left, scrambling. He has room to run. He's just going to run it. Good. Run run run. Run. Great idea. He's going to have to get out of bounds here. Oh, he's actually going to juke. Swallow him. Good job by Zach. All the way down to like the 27-yard line, maybe. Usually there when you see quarterbacks... With pressure coming from the defense, they decide to slide and stay out of harm's way, but Rub goes with the old juke move and gets around Shualam there. Good vision there by Rupp to see that play break down. Had no man open, so he elected to go with a run. Rub's been having a, his best game of the season so far tonight. Doing a good job running this new formation that was just installed this week. Weist in motion again. Rupp's going to hand it off to him this time with a counter play. Good run by Weist. Still on his feet all the way down to the 13-yard line. Good play. Looks like some pushing after the play. Nothing that's going to warrant a flag. So the ball's going to stay at about the 12. Good solid. That counter run seems to be working well with Weist. 
coming into the backfield. Follow McGillman up the middle. I don't know if that's a design counter or if it just happens that every single time Weist has his left side open. It's hard to tell from up here. Either way, it's working well. Ben Cope has been on the sideline for, I believe, this whole offensive possession. Without a helmet on, that might mean Cope is injured. I'm not sure about that. It's going to be a play-action pass. It's going to actually be a bootleg. He's going to cut it back up the middle. Right near the heart of the defense. He's going to gain about six on the play. Good solid run by Zag. Trojans are getting close, breaking through for their first points. Yep. They got down to about the 12 in the first half and ended up going backwards. Let's see if they can keep going in the right direction this time. Find their way into the end zone. Be something to celebrate about. Cope in motion, or excuse me, Ramberger in motion there, hand up, hand off up the middle. Looks like a gain of two or three on the play. Two, I'd say. We that with Gelnet on the carry. Yeah, Gelnet on that one. Gonna bring up third and three now for the Trojans. Looks like number 22, Jason Caff, is getting some reps out there. I'm not sure what's wrong with Ben Cope, but it's not looking good at this point. Usually in on every offensive snap and has not seen one snap. This drive, I do not believe. Helmet is not on his head. It's, he's holding his helmet. Either way, Rupp's going to take this snap here after he sends Weist in motion. Another handoff to Weist up the gut. He's going to be brought down from behind by the Tri-Valley defender. Good job there preventing Weist from getting past the first down marker. Going to bring up fourth and... Maybe one, maybe two for the Trojans. See if they go with the field goal here, go for the points. Looks like they're going to go for the points. Smith is still on the sideline. Shouldn't say go for the points, go for the first down and the, hopefully the eventual touchdown. Fourth and two. Two minutes left here in the third quarter. Trojans looking for their first points of the year. It's a big fourth down here. A conversion here will likely result in a touchdown, but Coach Bell is not liking what he sees. He's going to call timeout. Head out onto the field. We're actually going to take a quick commercial break. On the TSN, we'll be back. Score is 40 to zero in favor of the Tri Valley Bulldogs. Did you know? When the sun sets, unbelted deaths rise. 61% of passenger vehicle occupants killed at night were unbuckled. Just buckle up. A click can save your life. Everybody. All right, and we are back as the coaches are off the field now. Jordan's going to head up to the ball here, looking to gain this first down and hopefully a touchdown. All right, number 62, Dane Zimmerman's in the line this time for the Trojans. Rupp's going to that's going to be a false start by the Trojans. Another mishap when they get close to the end zone been the story of this game so far good momentum halted by penalties for the Trojans see they'll probably like to pass on this one yep could have went with a run here but now fourth and seven as opposed to fourth and two good chance we see a pass which Rupp has been finding some decent success with so far tonight we'll have to see here what they like to do Rupp takes the snap he's going to roll out to his left looking for a man going to have a man and it's going to be thrown to Mason Weist and for the touchdown. <laughs> the fans here at Veterans Memorial Field erupt with some cheers. Happy to finally see the Jordans punch one in in their third game of the season. 
Yeah. Luckily there for the Trojans, that key penalty did not come back to bite them. Good play by Rupp and Weist on that yeah, one. Good connection. They've been working well together all night. And Eli Smith, who has been very antsy to get an extra point attempt, is finally on for his first attempt of the season. See what he can do. Can be a good snap, good hold, and the point is up. And it's good. Good, good kick there by Smith. Great kick. First extra point of the season, first touchdown. A lot of excitement here amongst the fans and the cheerleaders. Like I said, finally seeing the Trojans put some points on the board. Tri Valley defense is no slouches either. That's a good good team to put up some points against. After his first extra point of the season, Smith's going to be on here to kick this one off. Got to feel good for Rupp, who has had to deal with some adversity so far this season. Finally finds the end zone. Rupp had to deal with some shaky blocking, some shaky play calling. Finally turned it around. He's having a great game so far tonight. Him and Weist have been working well together. Kick's going to be a low one by Smith, but that's going to be fumbled there. It's going to be picked up by Buchanan around the 18. Stephen Heck gets smoked there by number 36 for the Bulldogs. That was number 36, Tyler Dalton, with a great block on Heck. It's going to be finally brought down by Hayden Bellis, maybe Mason Bellis, one of the Bellis brothers. Made the tackle there. Those points are a step in the right direction for the Trojans. Yep, the offense has 100% looked better. We've been asking for it since week one for a new formation, and we got it. And it's, wor it's worked for sure tonight so far. Hopefully Coach Bell sticks with it. And this is a good game, even though it's only, I mean, the score is still 40-7, to but it's good to get a touchdown because next week Trojans take on Millersburg, who has also had their struggles this season. Get some momentum going into that game. Trojans could find their first win of the season. going to be a timeout taken here by the Bulldogs and we're going to head to a quick commercial break now. Score is 40 to 7 in favor of the Bulldogs with 1:10 to go in the third quarter. Did you know the annual two-week Click It or Ticket crackdown has resulted in more than 3 million seatbelt citations over the last five years. That's a ticket every other second. Just buckle up. A click can save your life. And we're back here on Trojan Sports Network. Tri-Valley looking to put some more points on the board with just a minute 10 left in the third quarter. Looking like a second string quarterback now into the Bulldogs. Swallow though, still in the game and a nice run by him. He's going to have one man to beat here in Reed. Good job by Connor Reed forcing Swallow out of bounds. Still a great run by Swallow. Looks like the quarterback is number 13, Dalton Leedy. Sophomore. Yep, we'll be getting some, getting some reps here late in this game. Replacing Yoder, who had a wonderful game passing. He's like had that. success passing all season. Might sound like a broken record here, but that Yoder-Buchanan connection has been working well tonight for the Bulldogs. Another handoff to Schwalm off the gut. He's going to break this one Looks off. Like He's going to go all the way on that one. And the Trojans' first touchdown of the year is going to be quickly countered by a touchdown for the Bulldogs, making this score 46-7 to now in favor of the Bulldogs. 23 seconds to go. Just poor defense by the Trojans on that one. 
Great blocking also by the Bulldogs. Trauma had a huge hole to run through there right up the middle. The Trojans had done pretty good up until about the second half on rush defense. Then they just kind of broke down from there. Looking at number eight, Colby Harner on to kick this one after Steely kicked the last two. Good snap, good hold. Almost blocked. And good. No, he's going to be wide left there. Zach up almost blocked that one. Looked like he jumped off sides, but he did not apparently. Good, good pressure there by him. He's going to keep the score 46 to seven with 23 seconds to go now. A favor of the Bulldogs. I believe Harner has missed his last two. Chats is going to be on to kick this one again. One of the better players on the Tri-Valley soccer team. Scored one of the best goals I think I've ever seen in person against Millersburg. Has a strong leg and he's been shoving it off so far tonight in his numerous kickoffs. Gonna be another nice kick by Schatz. High. Fielded at about the 15, and it's gonna be dropped by Boyer. He picks it back up. He's gonna be leveled at the 25 yard line. Hit by Tyler Dalton on that one. Nice tackle. See if they're trying to stick with her up here. If they're gonna sub in airs, looks like Rupp will be the quarterback. But he's going to have to wait until the next quarter to start. We're going to end the third quarter and head to a quick commercial break. Scores 46 to 7 in favor of the Bulldogs from Veterans Memorial Field. Boyer's Grocery Market, located in Lycans, PA, offers both convenience and a wide selection of products. At Boyer's Food Markets, you will always find quality items and quality customer service. There are over 6,000 items on sale every day. Boyer's Food Markets, where the shopping is fast and saving money is easy. Dairy Queen is located on Main Street in Lycans. Come here to please your sweet tooth with any one of the many blizzards, sundaes, milkshakes, or royal treats like a banana split or a peanut buster. And don't forget about the five buck lunch served every day from 11 to 4. Always be checking in because hours are due to change depending on the season. See you there. Jordan's going to start the quarter with the ball at their own 26. Rupp's going to hand this one off to Jake Ramberger on the left end. Going to get a gain of maybe two, three on the play. Like Ben Cope is still on the sideline. Something might be wrong. Rupp's going to bring the Trojans up to the line of scrimmage here at the 28. He's going to send a man in motion. He's going to take the snap and hand it off to Ramberger, I believe. Good solid run there, out past the first down marker all the way out to the 40-yard line. Excuse me, that was Mason Weist on the carry there. He's having a good game so far. Yep, has a chosen the first touchdown of the season. Had another nice catch and a couple nice runs. Jordans have blown out their previous two first downs in the season tonight. Might be six, seven, eight at this point. And more to come. And another player looks injured. Stephen Heck, after that rough hit he took on the kickoff, has ice on his shoulder. I assume he'll be out for the game. Ramberger in motion gets this one. He tries to hit the hole, but there's not much of a hole, and he's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Heck's injury there continues this trend of the Trojans just being derailed by injuries. Five or six key players now. 
have been hurt. Brown, Barge, Warner, McAllister, Heck, Bechtel playing through injury. Been a rough couple weeks so far. Rupp's going to drop back the pass now. Going to be pressured up the middle. He's going to roll to his left, and he has a man, but he's going to overthrow that man. And the interception is going to be dropped by number five, Buchanan. It's overthrown by Rupp. Should have had the interception, but just dropped it. Yeah, Tri-Valley has dropped quite a few interceptions tonight. Still winning the turnover battle 2-0, to zero, though, after we saw the, tro the two mishaps on the Trojans handoffs. Surprising they've dropped so many. There's a wide receivers back there playing cornerback and safety. Rupp's going to send the man in motion. It's going to be Weist. Rupp's going to roll out to his right looking for a man. Has nobody. He's going to reverse the field back to his left. Going to have to get rid of this one. Looking for Ramberger. Has Ramberger downfield. And it looks like a simultaneous catch there. We're going to have to see. Looks like Ramberger came down with it. Yep. Wow, good throw good there by play. Zach Rupp. Avoiding the pressure and making a lovely throw down the field and a lovely catch by Ramberger. Passing offense has looked significantly better. Warders can't really make it work, but has been very nice so far from the Trojans. Rupp having a very good game. Did a good job there of avoiding all that pressure up the middle. It's number 75, Darren Young, by the pressure there on Rupp. Rupp's going to hand this one up to Weiss up the middle. And he's going to be still on his feet all the way out to about the 30-yard line. Good solid run there by Weiss. Rupp here is going to send Ayers in motion. He's going to fake the handoff and keep it around the right side. Has some running room here. Makes one tackler miss. And he's going to be forced out of bounds by Yoder inside the 20. Good blocking by the Trojans there. Good run by Rupp. 17-yard line looks like he went out of bounds there. Back inside the red zone for the Trojans. But another quality drive. It's about their fourth, fourth or fifth good drive of the game. Looking for their second touchdown. Rupp's going to take this snap and hand it off to Gelnat right at the middle. It's going to be a hard run by Gelnat for a gain of three on the play. Second and seven coming up for the Trojans. Just at the 15-yard line now. Rupp's going to hand this one off to, I believe, Ayers. The freshman is going to have a nice, solid run for six yards. Going to bring up third and short. Might be third and inches, maybe third and a yard. Good run by the freshman Ayers there. First down here would be a great big step towards his Trojan's second touchdown of the season and the game.
Rupp's going to send Ayers in motion again and roll out to his left from the keeper, but he's not going to be able to find any room. He's sandwiched in the backfield by three or four Tri-Valley defensive linemen. It's going to bring up fourth and five now for the Trojans. I would say they're going to elect to go for it here. Yep, Smith is still on the sideline, so it's going to be a fourth down attempt for the Trojans. See what the play call is here. Pass or run. Pass has been working quite well for the Trojans on these third and fourth down plays. Rupp's going to take this one. He's going to drop back to pass. Looking to his right. Ooh, he finds a man, Connor Reed, but Reed's going to drop that one. It was a little bit behind him and a little bit low. Hit him in the hands, but he couldn't bring that one in. So tri is going to take over at their own 12-yard line. Four and a half minutes to go here in this contest. So the second string quarterback still in. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. I'll have to see if I can get a number in the ball carrier there. Number 12, I believe that was in the carry. Tyler McGrath, McGrath maybe, freshman. Also brought down by number 12, Macklin Ayers, freshman for Trojan. Freshman on fresh, freshman on freshman action there. Three and a half to go here in this ball game. Quarterback Leedy in the shotgun now. He's going to keep it around the right end, looking for some room to run. But he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of two with him play. Bring up third and ten now for the Bulldogs. Good job by the Trojans defense. Stopping behind the line. Leedy again in the shotgun here. In the pistol, I should say. He's going to look to pass here, looking to his right. Going to overthrow his intended receiver on the play. Number nine, Steely, was the intended receiver, so it looks like he does do more than kick. Multi-sport athlete. Not sure how Chai Valley soccer coach might feel about that. Either way, though, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Fourth and ten now coming up. Good job by Eric Schultz, staying positive through these tough times. Getting the student section fired up. Two minutes to go in this game. Ramberger back to receive the punt. Going to be a nice punt there. Ramberger's going to let that. Oh, he's going to pick it up and be forced out of bounds soon after. Going to go out about the 38. Chordans will take over here with 149 to go in the game. Now we'll see what quarterback is on the field now for the Trojans. You assume the Trojans will try to score here just to get some momentum going into next week. Looking like Rupp's going to stay in the game. Trojans are going to stick with their starters as will try Valley on the defensive side of the ball. Rupp's going to send Ayers in motion. He's going to look to pass here, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield by number 55 for the Bulldogs, Brian Ruzinko. Good pressure there by him. Gave Rupp no time to make a decision. A minute to go now. Shout out to all of our sponsors, anybody who helps us make this broadcast possible for you, and thank you all for watching tonight.
Ayers in motion again. It's going to be handoff to him. Looking for him around the right end, and he's going to be brought down by a couple of Bulldogs there. I believe that could be the last play of the game here. We'll have to see if the Trojans decide to run another one. Not sure what the play clock, play clock is in high school. Coach Bell wants us to run one more play, it looks like. 15 seconds left here. Hopefully next week Trojans get some of their injured players back. Try to bounce back from this loss. And looking like the last play of the game, Rupp's going to be looking downfield, looking deep. Has a man, Jake Ramberger. And Ramberger's going to go in for the touchdown. Great play. Trojan, that's a beautiful pass by Rupp and a beautiful catch there by Ramberger. Good ball there by Rupp. Keeping the Trojans, like I said, their second touchdown of the game and the season. No time remaining on the clock here, and I don't think we're going to see an extra point. So the final score from tonight's game is going to be 46-13 to in favor of the Bulldogs, but still a great game offensively for the Trojans compared to the previous two weeks. Again, thank you all for watching the Trojan Sports Network. Have a good night.